Can you recall the time you accepted Jesus Christ in your life? What were you then? Ano po yung buhay nyo noon na hindi pa kayo nakakatanggap kay Jesus? Kayo ba'y wala lang? Ano yung buhay nyo? As in parang sumusunod lang kayo sa, sa agos ng, ng buhay. What made you accepted Jesus Christ? So what prompted you to accept Jesus Christ? Another question is, have you ever tried to find something that you did not know? Meron ba kayong hinahanap na hindi nyo alam kung ano yung hinahanap nyo? So, I went through that during my growing up years. No, I'm searching for something but I didn't know what it was. So this afternoon, allow me to share my story in finding Jesus. Rather, He found me. Okay. So, I came from a conservative Catholic belief. Yung grandmother ko is a leader in our community church. Then my father is a corsilista. So alam niyo po yung corsilista. He's one of the leader there in Corsilio. So my parents are very strict. Yung mga Catholic festivities, they are strict in following all these traditions. We always attend to church every Sunday with the whole family. So when I was in high school or secondary school, I started to ask myself or question my belief. And I have this urge to seek, to seek for something that I don't know what it was. Okay, so my mother started to accept visitors from different belief. So iba-ibang belief yung ina-accept niya sa bahay. My father was then stopped attending church. So kami na lang po, hindi nakasama yung tatay ko na nag attend ng church. I asked him why. All I remember he said, Oh, I can pray. I can pray to God. I can talk to God anywhere. And I have all these strange dreams. Like, Falling stars, catching them one by one, throwing one, catch again. I dream of the image of a person in a bright light, asking me to come to near to that light. So parang yung movie, sa movie, di ba, yung mamamatay ka na. na. You know, <laughs> tinatawag ka ng bright lights na yon. So, and also, I'm dreaming of the image of Jesus. And the most interesting part is I dream of the coming of Jesus in the book of Revelation. So looking back, I realized that these are the events or, or dreams that God is asking me to seek the truth, to find the truth and come to Him. So I was in... So one day... When my sister, my si Ate Jo, invited me to come to her in their school. I didn't know it's a Bible study. So and that's the only time that I know my sister is a born-again Christian na pala. So born-again Christian na siya. So, yeah, I attended. There's a feeling of uneasiness. Kasi they are all like graduating from college and I'm just like high school but I listened. Kind of interesting. Oh. And then weeks after, she invited me again to meet their missionary pastor. So we have a Bible study in, in a squatter's area. So missionary kasi. So we went to a squatter's area. We had our Bible study there. And then she preached. And then after she preached, so ito na. She asked the people to come in front and, act, and asking to accept Jesus Christ. So I heeded that invitation. I went there and as he prayed over, I felt Jesus sin. I felt Jesus, his love and grace filled my, filled with spirit. I feel that Holy Spirit 
touch me. Iba yung, iba yung pakiramdam. It's indescribable. So then, after that, so I had this longing to, to know more Jesus. We had a secret Bible study. So secret, closed door. Kasi ayaw namin na malaman ng father ko. Kasi father ko, very strict talaga siya. So kulang na lang talaga itakwil niya kami. Pag nalaman niyang born again kami. So, we had a Bible study in our room. And then we attend church. So regularly. And then when I went to college, ganun din, I regularly attend to a Christian Life Fellowship. That, is, that was in Magallanes. So near our uh, school. But few years later, I stopped attending. I came back to searching again, searching a church. Okay, until I met my husband, si Ariel po yung aking loving husband. <laughs> so I met him. She in, he invited me to attend to their church. So I attended. I enjoyed attending there. So because the, the people there are friendly. So hindi po dahil kay Ariel kaya ako ma-attend doon. Hindi po. So in fact, nandun po yung ex niya. So okay lang. Nandun yung ex niya. So okay lang na umattend doon. <laughs> kasi, kasi I feel I belong to that church. I feel that I will grow more in Christ. So I started attending. I started to join the ministry and inviting friends. Okay? So after that, we move back. We move here in Singapore. So again, di ba iniwan mo yung church mo don? Nandito ka iba na naman. So you go through searching again. So I attended different churches until in 1997, I found Win. So nasa lavender pa siya. So naghanap kami. Inaanap ko talaga. And then, yeah, I found my second family here in Singapore. So, yeah, look at me now. Talking to you, speaking to you in front. Diba? So, I realized that God never left me during those painful trials. He is my comforter. He comforts me during those painful trials. Like when my mom passed away, a year after I graduated. And then, my father died a week after I gave birth to Abby. So I wasn't able to go back to Philippines to attend his funeral. You see that feeling, niba? Hindi kayo mahak attend ng kanyang funeral. Your father, you haven't seen him. And then, three years ago, it's my brother naman. So with all this, I managed to carry on with all these circumstances because I know God is with me. He sustained me. He gave me strength to carry on with my life. So I think this is the best decision that I've ever made in my life. Of course, second, uh, second to, my ha- to, my, to having a, a family, marrying Ariel. Um, so, it's the best decision ever. Now, being born again is not easy. People will ignore you. Your friends will ignore you. They will avoid you. And they will not understand you. Diba? But how will you explain the term born again to someone who never heard it or more so able to understand it? So, paano po natin i-explain yon? So, in our conversation today, Jesus will reveal to us the real meaning of born again and having eternal life. Okay, so this afternoon po, the title of our conversation is Finding Life Everlasting. Finding Life Everlasting. How does one find it? Is it easy po ba? Is it easy or complicated? So do we need to go through that tough time or do we need to sacrifice anything? 
to, a, to be able to get that life everlasting. Okay, so to, this afternoon, allow me to share to you one truth about our conversation. He gave up his life to give us eternal life. He gave up his life to give us eternal life because Jesus died on the cross to redeem and give us eternal life. Okay, so our text today can be found in John chapter 3, verse 1 to 18. So it's about the conversation of Nicodemus and Jesus. But who is Nicodemus first? Now, there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. So, sinabi dito, Nicodemus is a Pharisee. Ano ba yung mga Pharisee? Pharisee are those group of people who despise Jesus because they find him threat to their position and power. Diba? Alam nila yung Old Testament, alam nila, but they despise Jesus. But, I think Nicodemus is different. He's different from other Pharisee. Why? I think he's looking for something. He's searching for the truth, the truth about Jesus. That's why in verse 2, he came to Jesus personally. So he came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the sign that you are doing if God were not with him. So at night, why at night? Why at night if there are a plenty of opportunity to look for Jesus during that day? Diba? You know why? Because during those times, nighttime is a good cover to those people who are trying to hide something. Ba? They are trying to hide something. They want to be anonymous. They don't want to uh, let other people know what they're doing. So, or maybe Nicodemus is afraid of the Pharisee. Afraid of what they are going to say about Nicodemus. Or maybe he's protecting his reputation. Diba? Kasi teacher nga siya eh. So, he's protecting his reputation. Or perhaps he wants to find time or intimate moment with Jesus. Because he wants to know, eh? he wants to know about the truth about Jesus. So, here he said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. So, Nicodemus here acknowledged that Jesus is a teacher. Ma? Hindi niya binubola si Jesus dito. So he's not trying to please Jesus just to, you know, they'll, they'll have an intimate moment. Hindi niya please, but because he wants to know more about Jesus. So anong sagot ni Jesus? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. So, sabi ni Jesus, di ba? You must be born again. Siguro sabi ni Nicodemus, si Jesus talaga, oh, nagpapatawa. Born again, ako itong laki kong na to, di ba? Born again. So, naalala ko tuloy yung aking father, No? I remember my father when he came to know na born again na kami and they said that born again ang lalaki nyo nang yan ang tatanda nyo na born again pa so ganun. but have you noticed here Nicodemus said how can someone be born he didn't say why can a man be born again so there's a big difference, diba, when you ask why and how. Why is parang may resistance. Bakit? But when you ask how can someone be born again? How? There is a sign of willingness. Diba, parang interesado yung tao na malaman kung ano yun. Because, Jesus, uh, because Nicodemus 
is trying to find something. He knows that knowing is not enough. That there is something more. That there is something required. Diba? May, may kailangan gawin. So, Jesus answered, very, tr very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and spirit. Or of water and spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sounds, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. So Jesus emphasized here that we don't need reformation, but rather a radical transformation. Or conversion by the Spirit of God. Huh? He said, be born again. Be born again with water and spirit. So the change that needs to happen in our life is more radical by far than we thought. Okay? The change is beyond our power. Okay? We cannot rely on our power. We cannot do it. We cannot simply do it alone. Okay? It is only God himself that can give a new entire life. Can give birth to an entire new life in us. It's only God. Because he gave his life to give us eternal life. So what was the, again, Nicodemus asked, how can this be? Nicodemus asked. Obviously, hindi pa rin naiintindihan ni Nicodemus. Ma? He cannot understand pa rin. So, he said, you are Israel's teachers, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you the earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. Okay. So Jesus asked, why a great teacher of Israel cannot understand? We know that Nicodemus and Jesus is our teachers, diba? Right? They are both teachers, but they do not share the common ground. Okay. Jesus has descended from above, but Nicodemus haven't been born yet from above. So yun yung difference nila. That's why Nicodemus cannot understand Jesus. Nicodemus knows the law and the Old Testament, but that won't save him. Our salvation only when you understand Jesus and the salvation that God's offer, you will have eternal life. It is when you look up to Jesus on that cross, you look up to Jesus, accepting him and believing him, believing he will save us because he gave up his life to give us eternal life, okay? Because he loves us. That was demonstrated in the next verse, okay? The most memorized verse, the most loved verse. Do you know what's the next verse? <laughs> Nakita nyo na kanina eh, no? <laughs> okay, so John 3.16. I said it was the memori most memorized verse. So, is it true? Can you recite now? Okay, one, two, three. Okay, very good. Very good. <laughs> Okay, 
John 3.16 reminds us the first Christmas. Okay, God's presence is the best present ever. He is the reason for this season. Okay, John 3.16 tells us God's love. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 is the story of the greatest gift given to mankind. The gift of salvation. Jesus gave himself as a gift to all of us, to the world. God became one of us so that through him and by him we will have eternal life. His love is the greatest. His love is eternal. There's no expiration date. He loves you so much on your good days as much as he loves you on your bad days. He loves you when you are weak and when you are strong. He loves you when you are nothing and we ha when you have everything. He loves you who you are. He loves you whatever your status in life. His love is unconditional and powerful. Now, my question to you, to all of us, are you willing to accept that greatest gift? Are you willing? Will you believe? It says in John 3, 16, believe. Will you believe? Now, let me tell you, define more on what believe means. Believe is has a deeper meaning in John 3, 16. Okay? The Greek word is, believe in the Greek word is pisteo. Parang pistachio, pero pisteo. <laughs> so, pisteo signifies absolute confidence and trust. And a complete surrender and heart heartfelt obedience. So, hindi lang po siya believe lang. As in, oh, I believe Jesus. That's it? No, believe means a complete surrender and a heartfelt obedience and giving your trust. Believe in Jesus Christ means you are putting him in charge of your life. Putting him in charge of your present plans, your future plans, and even your eternal destiny. Yun po yung believe. It's far more than that believing that something is true. Because he gave his life to give us eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. So in effect, Jesus was saying, I came, do not be scared. I came not to scold you. I came to save you. Jesus said, I came not to scare you. I saved not to serve you, not to scold you or scare you. So do not be afraid because God says, I am with you. I am for you. I love you. Sabi ni God. He loves you. He loves us so much. So we do not we shouldn't be afraid or worry because in Romans 8 verse 1 says therefore there is now no condemnation for those who trust in Christ Jesus. Yes, there's no more condemnation because, because we are in Christ. And in Christ, we have eternal life. So as we, this Christmas, 
as the world commemorate on the, and celebrate Jesus Christ, uh, Christmas is more than just festivities. Okay? It is more than holiday moods. It is more than exchanging gifts. The real reason for Christmas is when Jesus Christ died on the cross and gave us eternal life. He is the reason for this season. So it's my hope and prayer that we truly realize that Jesus is the real reason for this Christmas. Because he gave up his life to give us eternal life. Now, do you know what, God's, what God wants for this Christmas? What God wants for Christmas? Do you know? There's only three words. Be born again. So be born again. Diba yun yung sinasabi niya kay Nicodemus? Be born again. Accept Jesus Christ. And believe in Him. So this is my challenge for all of us. Believe. Believe that the Lord Jesus Christ died for us to redeem and save us. Believe with full trust, with confidence, with heartfelt obedience. Next is share. Continue to share God's love. Continue to share God's salvation to your loved ones, to your friends, to your colleagues, or wherever God has placed us. Share. And lastly, remember, God wants everyone to be, to be fully assured and understand that the basis of acceptance with God is not by our performance. But it is His grace that Christ died for our sins once and for all. And we have to put our trust in Him, not in our own good works. So by His grace, we have saved. Praise you, Father, and we magnify your name. We are not worthy of your love, O oh God. We have a lot of shortcomings. But because of your grace and because of your love for us, you have forgiven us. Thank you, Father, for your forgiveness. Thank you for the first Christmas. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who gave up his life to give us eternal life. Father, bless us and renew our spirit. Renew us. Renew a right spirit in us through your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your great love and the gift of salvation. Thank you, Father, for the assurance that you will never leave us, that you will be with us forever. Our gratitude, praises, and worship to you alone. In Jesus' name. Amen.